Welcome back everyone, I'm Tom Murphy and this is our last segment of Trinidad Now and Trinidad Times Television. With me uh, for the final second, Jackson Pixley. Jackson, as we've gone through this before, this is the third segment, this is about management. Um, as a city council member, what is your role in government? You know, I think uh, as a city council member or any role in government is to be a voice for the people. You know, it's very important to me to to hear how the voters and the public uh, feel about certain issues. And you know, obviously, uh, on certain issues, you're going to have a left and you're going to have a right. And uh, you know, it, it's it's up to us to make kind of our, our best informed decision. Uh, but essentially, every city council takes care of all the minor details that the public doesn't need to. I mean, they, they give us a general direction to go, and, and, and I feel that it's our duty to stay in that general direction and just kind of tie up all the loose ends and take care of all those details. Okay. Um, what relationship should council members have with city employees? For example, if an employee came to you to complain about their supervisor, how would you respond? Uh, that's a good question. Um, you know, having never worked uh, as a city councilman before, you know, I do feel that it is in the best interest of the city as a whole for city council and city officials to work closely together. Uh, I'm not sure that my position as city council would be one where I could offer any more than, you know, a, uh, a friendly ear and possibly speak with my other city council members depending on the severity of the situation that was brought up. Okay. Um, how do you define leadership? Well, again, leadership is, is listening to the people, taking everything, uh, their opinions, into consideration and acting in the interest of those people. Okay. Um, Leaders need to be able to be heard, okay? Uh, leaders uh, should demand respect and show compassion for everybody in their community. Uh, not just certain special interest groups or not just this group or the other. You know, I, I think what a leader needs to do is, is bring the whole community together as one. And, and that's something that I really want to do. I want, you know, I'm proud to live in this town and I want everybody to be proud when they say, I'm from Trinidad, right? And I don't, think that, uh, I don't think that's asking too much. I don't think that's an unattainable goal. Okay. Um, how, do you, how would you explain uh, to people that are watching, what is the council manager form of government? You know, as, as, for example, like in Colorado Springs and Denver, they have a, a mayor council which is, when you're elected mayor, you're the city manager. Um, and Pueblo is talking about it. Uh, I can't say that this is, there's been discussions on council, but I've heard people think and say that, you know, they could run the city of Trinidad, you know, without having been, you know, the education and the training. So... Yeah, I'm going to go ahead and disagree with that thought. Um, you know, a lot of elected city officials... Um, you know, it's more or less a, a, a popularity contest, okay? Uh, just because you're the oldest family in town or just because you're well-liked amongst your peers in your community does not in any way, shape, or form make you educated enough to be a city manager and run an entire city. I mean, our current city manager and our former city manager, this is what these people were educated with, okay? They're experts in their field. Right. And I think by putting the two together, you're just really asking for trouble. Okay. I, I suspect when, as things trickle down, if it's in Denver and Springs, and now there's discussion in Pueblo, it will be, be discussed here. So I, the, my reason for asking that is I anticipate down the road that it might become an issue. So I'm trying to find out now where people stand on that. The next uh, three questions I'm going to combine into one, and that is, 
do you know what executive session is and what can be discussed in executive session? And what if an illegal or improper decision or discussion would take place in executive session, what would you do? And, and let me qualify that before you answer with it. I know that this is your first time, so you may not know, and that's understandable. But if you do have a knowledge of executive session, tell me about it. Uh, what I do know about executive session from going to city council meetings, and, and I have been... Uh, I have been trying to attend as many as as possible in the last uh, year and a half, especially uh, certain hot button issues that I'm personally involved in. Um, but an executive session is essentially, to my knowledge, a closed session where you know the public is not uh, necessarily allowed to hear what is discussed. <laughs> I see you found my dog. Yeah, yeah she found me. It's yeah, okay. Yeah, she, we're she, we're <laughs> a small mom and pop show, so yeah. this is this isn't national television. We're okay, yeah. and even on national television. Trinidad, meet Harlequin. Yes. Have a have a have a pet is okay. But uh, yeah, so so back to the uh, executive okay. session. I mean, executive session is, is things that oh, okay. that uh, the public doesn't really need to be make privy to the whole argument for and against. And I know. Uh, executive session uh, on a national level is different than on a city level. I mean, executive session uh, on a national level right. is more, you know, orders that are mandated by the president. And they will go in and, and, and speak about those things. Right. But uh, honestly, that that's about as much as I know okay. about that. that. I'm not sure exactly what issues can and cannot be discussed. What I, what I can say is that if anything illegal or sort of under the table was ever uh -huh. happening in a, an executive session that I was a part of, um, pretty sure I would have to move to end that session right then and there. Okay. I mean, uh, I'm, a, I'm a huge believer in government transparency. And uh, again, if, if there's something going on that that it's is casual. not 100% okay. okay. on the up and up, then, uh, you know, I think that needs to be addressed and, and brought to the public's attention right away. Okay, second and last part. Uh, you can read these or we can ask you, just ask you about the referendums, two, three, four, and five. If you'd like to read them, uh, what's your thoughts on them? You know, all the referendums uh, put forth for this election by the city, I think they're all no-brainers in the yes column. Uh, okay. You know, they... Yeah, again, that, that's pretty much it. Uh, I think they're all easy yeses. Okay. Um, I don't think any of them could possibly cause any harm to right. the city or the city government. As you can see, we're pet friendly here. <laughs> um, oh, so the last thing, as I tell everybody, and you know, our conversation has been between us. Don't look at the cameras, but now in the last part, I'm going to ask you to turn and look to the camera, babe. We're going to go down. We're going to shut you down though for a second while your dad here is going to answer a question. Oh, careful! All right, there we go, babe. Um, Love animals. So, <laughs> <laughs> um, so in 30 seconds or 30 minutes, however long, you know, this is unedited or anything, look at the camera there and just, you know, tell the people why or ask them to vote for you, whatever it is that you want to say to them. So right here. Okay, great. Uh, you know, I'd just like to say in conclusion, uh, again, I, I see a whole lot of potential in this small town. And I really think that it just needs a little bit of outside perspective. Uh, I know a lot of you may be thinking, well, he's only been here for two years. What can he possibly know? Uh, it, it doesn't take long to get to the heart of the issues that this town is facing. And, you know, right now we've got, you know, I, I think the entire council is made up of lifelong members of Trinidad. And, and, you know, I think that's great, right? But I think that this town could really benefit from a fresh new set of ideas, kind of an outside perspective, you know, an outsider looking in, so to speak. Uh, because things uh, have kind of happened one way, and only one way in this town for a long time. And I, and I think it's really time to, to push past that. Uh, I think that I am the person that offers that unique perspective. Uh, Keep in mind, I also grew up in a town of 3,000 people, so I really have maintained my small town values, and I understand uh, the values of this community. Uh, but at the same time, you know, I'm, I'm here to shake things up a little bit. And keep in mind, I'm only one person on the city council. It's not like, uh, you know, if you 
side to, to vote for me at all. He's, he's a little too progressive or he's, his ideas are a little too crazy, right? Like I'm, I'm still only one person. All, all I'm asking for you is, is to give me the opportunity to let our city council and our town and our city government as a whole think of things just a little differently than they have before. Uh, you know, I'm not here to turn this town on its head, okay? Uh, I am just here because I believe in this town and I wanna serve this town and this community. And I really wanna see this town take that next step. Uh, another reason I think that I deserve your vote, okay, is the cannabis industry. Again, love it or leave it. Uh, it's, it's here to stay, at least for a while. And my background in the last several years has been exclusively in marijuana. And I think having an expert in the cannabis industry on city council will help really solve a lot of these missteps and answer a lot of questions that I hear being asked at every single one of these meetings. Uh, so along with my unique perspective to this town and the issues facing it, my expertise in a field that is really a large part of this town right now could really be invaluable. Um, so that's me in a nutshell. My name's Jackson Pixley. Uh, I hope that you will at least consider giving me your vote. Um, again, uh, I'm just here to work for you, okay, with some fresh ideas. And I need your help to help move Trinidad forward. Thank you. Jackson, before we wrap it up, I just want to say what I've said to all the candidates is what, in, in filming all these years and covering city council, what makes me excited is the number of candidates we have. And really now, after you, I, I, a couple of people have not interviewed and I don't know that they're going to, you're the last interview and I think we have quite a stable of good people running. And I think it's an indication of how people feel about where we're going. You know, we've, those of us been here a long time, I've ridden the ups and downs. I think we're on the upswing and, and thank you for running. I, it's, uh, we're lucky to have this many people care about our community that much. So I wish everybody luck and uh, thank you for being a part of the program. All right, I'm gonna, thank you very you much. I'm gonna wrap it up with one last thing. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm Tom Murphy and this is Trinidad Now and Trinidad Tides Television. Thank you for watching.